then uh, sometimes it takes some long while and the person finds himself falling in fortune again. You don't discount that person, you don't throw him away, you don't throw away, you don't get that many the person and say, you cannot be dead, you cannot be no discussion. I have to answer that in two ways. One, I know that anybody who is into such, you know, a mess, uh, usually would not want to open up. There is this uh, secretiveness about certain actions that, you know, when they open up and uh, it, it happens that uh, it is heard somewhere else. It becomes malicious and the individual may recall and may not never again want to you know discuss such matters with anybody so first church leaders and elders the ministers who handle people who struggle with such an intimate issue uh, keep it as a secret thing as a closed matter it's not something you you begin to discuss and maybe call the person's name and say this person is into this or into that that way you're damaging their life and uh, it can even uh, exacerbate the problem rather than uh, uh, solve it at all. So there is a need to handle that with utmost you know, confidentiality that it demands. It's a confidential thing. It's not something you open your mouth wide and begin to disclose everywhere. And when they have that assurance that the confidentiality of their matter is secure, is, 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 will be upheld. They will be open to disclose what they're passing through. Oftentimes when I deal with such cases, I, I know what it means. Some people are not easy to open up. They, they pause, they don't want to come out and say in the way it is. But if, if you give such a one the assurance like like this is between us, it's not getting anywhere else. That that confidence is, is boosted, is built up, and the person can open up and tell you exactly what is going through. So those that have been uh, sometime betrayed, maybe you, you, you disclose your you know struggles and worries to somebody you trusted and you believe was going to help you to keep it a, a close matter and help you out. And, and, and the struggle and then you get to hear it else and it becomes a scandal. There is always this uh, a natural reaction to shut out, shut everybody up and then keep it all to yourself and die with it. But that is not a solution in a certain history and they don't uh, ever make a right. So what will happen is that you be very discreet and find that people who can and who are tested and trusted uh, uh, counselors who have what it takes to handle these issues. So it's not something you uh, tell everybody, it's close to everybody, it's something you selectively do so that you receive help rather than receive condemnation and destruction. Yes, and some people have come up and to say that I have fasted, I prayed, I have done so many things and yet I see this happening. Uh, and then they tend to get uh, and get uh, discouraged. The truth about this, I mentioned it earlier, I said, this is a sin of passion. It has to do with emotion. And what has to do with emotion? The scripture calls it besetting sin or the sin that thought easily beset you. It is besetting in nature because it is a prophetic because it's, it is so attacked to a man that uh, and so close to a man that it, it raises uh, it, it goes with the emotion, it goes with the passion, and uh, the human being is an emotional being. Uh, and uh, because of that, it seems quite difficult handling. Uh, anybody who tells you that this is something you just handle with a, a wave of the hand, with a whisk, no, it's not. It is something you, you labor over until that one gets to stabilize. Sometimes they fall back and then they need to rise up again. And then uh, sometimes it takes some long while and the person finds himself falling back, faltering again. You don't discard that person, you don't throw him away, you don't throw her away, you don't get angry with the person and say, you cannot be good anymore. 
cannot make it. No, it's not so. These are things that are just like every addiction. I was talking with a, a young man called me yesterday and was talking about his brother. That one is addicted to drugs. We shall be talking about drug addiction sometime uh, on in this uh, podcast. And uh, you see that uh, this young man, each time they, they, they get him off the drugs and then uh, give him money to restart business, he goes back into drugs. He uses the money to do drugs again and then comes back broke. And then they, and I told the brother when he got said, no, you don't keep servicing his orgies, don't keep servicing his desires and passions. Once you give him that money to end that way, you've done it before, you've done it again and again and again, up to three times. And he ended up said, he needs rehabilitation. And if he doesn't get that rehabilitation, you will keep to servicing this passion of this. Let us pray. And dear Lord, we pray for as many as are struggling with this tendency, pornographic viewing, addiction to pornographic viewing. Lord, we pray because there is nothing beyond your power. And the mention of the name of Jesus in many powers. I repeat that people, I repeat that spirit, I repeat that foul spirit that is involved in activating these damning processes in that life. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ, lay your filthy hands off that life, off that soul. Release that life to serve Jesus. I command deliverance to come upon you. I command soundness of memory, soundness of mind. You're not given the spirit of timidity to fall back, but the spirit of sound mind, spirit of, 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 of sound mind. And I command soundness of mind to possess you so that you can serve the Lord and serve him acceptably. Receive grace to someone in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.